Enter the early stages of the second and last loop of the race with the Special Vehicle Championship, now a straight fight between race leaders Harman and Richard Suwald and Kali and Quinton Suwald, who had to finish in the top seven to clinch the title. Almost unnoticed, Nardis and Louis Alberts had slotted into a steady second place among the specials, with the raps a bet sounding healthy. Farm animals are disinterested spectators on off-road races, but after an up-and-down season, Johan van Staden and James Rousseau were looking to finish on a high note in the latest Spec Atlas Copco Bat and were well-placed for a podium finish. It was in the production vehicle category where the betting book had been turned upside down and unheralded Northwest crew Janni Fisser and Jorks Leroux out in front in the international truck Toyota Hilux and in the box seats where the championship was concerned. Fissa and Leroux were being chased by Hannes Grobler and Hini Terstegger, who were no threat from a championship point of view. The major incentive for Grobler and Terstegger was to give RFS a victory in their own race. The makeshift combination of David White and Etienne Besedenhout was still going along steadily with no hint of a problem for the Rubicon racing crew. They had slotted into a comfort zone in the top five among the special vehicles, but were starting to come under a little pressure from Cully and Quinton Sulwald, who had put themselves into a championship winning situation. Behind the Sulwalds, the Rubicon Toyota Hilux in the hands of Donaldson Prologue winners Piki Labiskachny and Rikas Erasmus had slipped back to third. They were just under three minutes behind production vehicle leaders Yanni Fisser and Jorks Leroux and had around three minutes to spare over Mike Whitehouse and Matthew Carlson in the region racing Nissan Navarro. The drive of the day had come from Team Castrol Toyota pair Duncan Force and Rob Howie, who started 26th on the road and had carved their way through the field with the pair again showing the ability to turn poor prologues into good races. The husband and wife team of Marius and Yolinda Free were still running strongly at the front of the Class B contingent in the PHB bat and were also on track for a top five finish. Behind them, Dion Fenter and Ian Palmer had a tight grip on Class D in the 4x4 Mega World Theatre Hilux, with the outgoing champions also looking at a top five overall finish in the production vehicle category. Fenter and Palmer running ahead of Louis Weichelt and Francis Bouchma, who were having an adventurous run in the N1 4x4 Toyota Land Cruiser. The steering kept working loose, and to make life more interesting, the car kept jumping out of gear. The Atlas Copco bat of Richard Fuller and substitute co-driver Dennis Murphy, who was standing in for the injured Jeff Minnett, was sandwiched between Weichelt and his father Cliff, and Johann Smallberger in the second N1 4x4 Toyota Land Cruiser. Weichelt Sr. now lives in Australia, and where possible, likes to make sure that business trips to South Africa coincide with rounds of the ABSA Championship. The Class E battle was still being dominated by Dirk Pitter and Chris Klaassens, who were on course to score their third win in four outings in the Zizwe Toyota Hilux. Pitter was still in line to win the Class E Drivers' Championship, while Klaassens had already wrapped up the Co-Drivers' Championship. A future award winner putting in a little practice, and not far behind the Toyota were Kutsia and Sandra Lambuskachny, who had taken over the Class B lead after the retirement of friendly rivals Keith and Andrew Makinetti. The Labuskachnis were running just ahead of Diedrich Hutting and Buxeliers in the Transcore Toyota, with Hutting only having to finish to win the driver's title. Behind them, Archie Rutherford and Mike Lawrenson were in the same boat, with the Regent Racing Jimco crew only needing to finish to win the Class P title ahead of Marius and Yolinda Ferry. Rutherford and Lawrenson were overall winners of last year's RFS Mahalis 400, but this time around were quite content to drive for the championship. Into the closing stages of the RFS Mahalis 400, with Herman and Vichat Sulwat firmly in control of proceedings at the front of the overall field and the special vehicle category. It also left the Special Vehicle Championship interestingly poised, with everything hinging on where reigning champions and championship leaders Kali and Quinton Sulwalt finished in the overall results. A broken shock absorber picked up on the first loop of the race was also probably a blessing in disguise. That meant the Sulwalts had to concentrate on keeping to the track and eliminated the risk of the crew trying to push too hard and then running into trouble. As it was, the Sulwalds had a comfortable lead over Nandis and Louis Alberts, who'd enjoyed a trouble-free run and never had to get out of the car at all.
Local youngsters were enjoying some weekend entertainment, while Pretoria crew Johan van Staden and James Rousseau were more than happy with a tight grip on a podium finish in the Atlas Copco bet. Van Staden and Rousseau were running ahead of new production car leaders Hannes Grobler and Henny Christiecher, who were on track for a fairy tale victory first time out in the petrol powered RFS BMW X3. It is not often that new race cars win first time out, but Grobler and Christiecher had used all their vast experience to drive a copybook race. The veteran crew went into the lead when the unfortunate Yanni Fissa and Jorks LaRue picked up a puncture in the international truck Toyota Hilux. Compensation for the Northwest crew was the knowledge that second place would be enough to give them the production vehicle championship. Behind Fissa and LaRue, early race leaders Peki Lambeskakhni and Rikas Erasmus were battling fuel pressure problems in the Rubicon Toyota Hilux and were coming under a late attack from Rubicon teammates David White and Etienne Besedenhout, who had put together a workmanlike performance in the Rubicon racing bat. Disappointing performance on the Friday prologue probably blew Duncan Foss and Rob Howey out of the production vehicle championship race, but the team Castel Toyota Hilux pair had come up with a stellar performance nonetheless. From 26 on the start line, they charged through the field and under the circumstances, fourth place was a brilliant result for the pair. Foss is a multiple South African track and off-road champion who's known for his fighting qualities, and these are attributes he and Howey will need in abundance when they tackle the Dakar rally for the first time in January. While spectators relax, it's hard work for crews, but Marius and Yulinda Free had come up with another impressive performance to lead Class P by a healthy margin. The husband and wife pair were running less than a minute ahead of brothers Eduardo and Ricardo Argazi from the DRC who picked up their best result of the season. There was also a season best for Peter Ruthven and Rudy Britz since they returned to the APSA Championship in the second Ruacon racing bat. There was another top-notch performance from Class D winners Dion Fenter and Ian Palmer, who also grabbed a top-five finish in the 4x4 Mega World Toyota Hilux. It was their fourth victory of the season, but a poor run early on ruined the hopes of clinching back-to-back -back championships. Behind Fenter and Palmer, the Atlas Copco bat of Richard Fuller and Dennis Murphy was still sandwiched between the 4x4 Mega World Toyota and the N1 4x4 Toyota Land Cruiser of Louis Weichelt and Francis Buschmann. It was also a brave fight back from Terence Marsh and George Smallberger in the Regent Racing Nissan Navara, but they were to lose out on winning the Premier SP class by just half a point to Yanni Fissa and Jorks LaRue. Behind the Nissan, punctures and an oil cooler problem hampered Anthony Taylor and Chris Birkin in what was a disappointing end to the season for the Team Castro Toyota crew. Bloemfontein pair Loder Brain and Rian Hreilung also had to fight a rearguard action in the Rubicon racing Ford Ranger, and fellow free staters Quibus van Tonde and Freddy Krill struggled with a fuel pressure problem in the Unifreight Ford Ranger, but finished in spectacular fashion. Behind them, the factory Ford Ranger crew of Lance Woolridge and Ward Huxtable never recovered from a disappointing prologue and also picked up their first puncture in two seasons. The Peter Marisburg crew were followed home by track racer Henny de Clark, who impressed in only his second race, and Keith Solomon in the LA Sport Toyota Hilux. As the midfield runners started to come home, the focus shifted to Cully and Quinton Sulwatt, who had gone missing. Keith Detoy and Ashley Thorne were ninth overall among the specials in the White Star Racing Bat, as news filtered through that the Sulwatts were stuck 10 kilometers from the finish line. The Toy and Thorn were followed by impressive Class E winners Dirk Pitter and Kurs Klaassens, and after a Donaldson prologue disaster, Nick Gosler and Andrew Massey did well to fight back and clinch a top 10 finish in the Men's Health International Zarko. Perseverance paid off for Klaus Weichelt and Johann Smallberger in the second of the N1 4x4 Toyota Land Cruisers, and they were a solid third in Class D. The Class B win for Kutsia and Sandra Lambeskachny in the race Sonic Zarko gave Sandra the co-drivers championship ahead of Andrew Macanetti, and fourth place in Class P was enough to give Regent Racing Jim Cope, Archie Rutherford and Mike Lawrenson the championship honours. <laughs> 
behind the region pair, Class D champions Jack and Sorrel Oosthuizen had the distinction of being the only crew with a 100% finish, with the LMC Land Rover team seeing out the distance on all eight events. Another championship was clinched when Dedrick Hutting and Buxelier brought the Transcore Toyota Hilux home in second place in Class E. That gave the consistent Hunting the driver's title ahead of Dirk Pitter. Behind them, it had been a tough day for Mpumalanga based brothers Johan and Werner Horn in the Mullalan Toyota Land Cruiser, but perseverance also paid off for a crew who made only sporadic appearances during the 2011 season. The season also produced some exciting new talent like teenagers Jason Fenter and Vincent van Alleman in the 4x4 Mega World Toyota, with the youngsters finishing third in the Class E Championship in their rookie year. At the other end of the scale, a battle-scarred veteran in Wolf Peter Formfei soldiered on manfully in the home-built WPP single-seater and clinched third place in the Class B Drivers' Championship. Back at Tolton International Raceway, a big crowd was on hand to welcome home Hermann and Richard Sobolt, who brought the Sobolt Racing SVR home ahead of another father and son crew in Nodis and Louis Alberts in the Raps of Bat. The final podium place went to Johan van Staden and James Rousseau in the Atlas Copco Bat, with just 90 seconds separating the top three crews. The final results and with Cully and Quinton Sulwalt listed among the non-finishers, victory on the RFS Mahali's 400 saw Harman and Vichat Sulwalt win the South African Special Vehicle Championship. RFS Managing Director Chris Deploy was on hand to do the podium honours with Vichat Sulwalt at 23, the youngest overall champion in ABSA Championship history. Yeah, it was and, and I think uh, as I said earlier to some of the fellow competitors, this is the first time that I was really scared to start this morning with all the rocks and, and we knew that we had to do excellent to, to have a chance and uh, we were fortunate to, to have a clean run, a little bit of a problem with the shocks at the back but uh, not that bad, uh, so we had a clean run and, and yes we've made it and then uh, the nervousness was there for Kali to see when is he coming in and unfortunately they had a problem, 10 goes out and they didn't make it so yeah we had a I didn't expect it, but we were very happy. Talk about keeping it in the family. The final championship positions with Hadman and Vichat Suwalt eight and a half points ahead of outgoing champions Kali and Quinton Suwalt. And the RFS Cup was filled to overflowing when veterans Hannes Hobbe and Hinita Stecher brought home the RFS BMW X3 at the front of the production car field. It was a fairy tale win, but the production car war was won by Yanni Fissa and Jorks Leroux, who limped home in the International Truck Toyota Hilux to win the production vehicle championship. The final place on the podium went to the Ruokon team of Piki Labaskachi and Rikus Erasmus. The final results with Hannes Grobler and Henny Tristierge finishing just over a minute ahead of the new South African champions. There were also top class performances from Fenta Palmer and Weichel Burjma in Class D. Once again, Chris Deploy was on hand to do the honours on the podium and after winning the first event of the season, Hannes Grobler and Henny Tristierge finished on the same high note. We were very, very chuffed. Uh, the last week or so, the guys worked very hard in the workshop to get the car ready and we wanted the car to be here to, to try and win our event and to test it, uh, to try and win the championship in next year. And I think the first step to next year, we've done well today. So we're very happy with that. At the start of the season, you could have named your own odds on Yanni Fisser and Jorks Leroux winning the production car championship. The pair never won an event, but solid finishes and three podiums saw the Northwest veterans crown South African production vehicle champions. Yeah, ons is baie blij. Ek het nou nie veroogend gedink dit sal so uitwerk nie. Ons het veroogend weggespring, dus ek vir Jorks was maar net in die pad blij. En lyk my, dit het maar die ding gedoen vandag. The final production vehicle points tally with Fisser and LaRue in the end comes to be clear of Duncan Foss and Fisser's brother Chris with Yarpi Bardnost. The top 10 was also made up entirely of SP-class crews. 
The team of the event award went to Rubicon Racing crew David White and Etienne Besedenhout, who immediately donated a 5,000 rand check from ABSA to the Sunfield Homes charity, which for more than 20 years has held a special place in the hearts of the off-road community. The off-road has chosen uh, a charity. It's uh, Sunfield Homes Down Syndrome Children. Um, we've been doing it for nearly 30 years. I think it might be 30 years. We like to give back what we take out of life. and uh, uh, We raise a, a lot of money for them. Uh, we give them a great day. They can go for rides in the off-road cars. Um, and uh, we, we, we have got people that help us, the Rotary, Rotary organization and also the Holly Davidson uh, come along and give the kids a rise. So it's a day in the sun, hopefully, to share with these children and to say Merry Christmas to them. A fitting way to end the 2011 ABSA Off-Road Championship with the annual Sunfield Homes Christmas Party another resounding success. The South African off-road community were looking to set a new record at one of South African motorsport's longest-running charity events. The Sunfield Homes Day at Talton International Raceway this year celebrated its 23rd birthday with funds going to Sunfield Homes and Logwood Village which cater for people suffering from Down Syndrome. The Charity Day is organised in conjunction with the Rotary Merlins Club based in Rudapurit and for the second year the Harley Davidson Club was also a part of the event. Morning rides in the off-road cars and Harley Davidsons are followed by Punch and Judy and Magician shows with the highlight of the day for the children, a visit by Santa Claus himself. From the Absol Off-Road Championship TV crew, we wish you and yours a blessed festive season.